Okay, welcome to the first finance and facilities meeting of the 2023 year. And we are in a different format this year. So um, at this point, we'll ask Mr. Gooding for a roll call. This is Warren. Here. This is Pickle Antonio. Here. This is Coates. Here. This is Warren. Here. Mr. Manley. Here. All right. And we have five items of, uh, or four. I just added one. Four items on the agenda tonight, and um, we'll begin as with our phase two construction project update from Mark Austin. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm just uh, getting the screen set up here. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, I didn't forget Happy New Year either. Sorry, no, Mark. that's all right. Happy New Year. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all again. Um, I uh, and uh, start the year of 2023. Uh, construction looks to be a, a pretty active this year for sure. We've got a couple of things launching the middle school, the high school will really start to build up some momentum and then we'll see the wrap up of our two elementary schools as well. So this looks to be a pretty significant year for the, the program as a whole. Um, we'll start off with a, a little deeper dive into the high school. Um, there is utility work that continues. Uh, the stadium amenity building is ongoing. If I can draw your attention to the photo in the bottom left, you can see that uh, the stadium amenity building is out of the ground, as we like to say, all the foundation work and under slab plumbing is in place. Um, and you can see stone actually being slung into place uh, with a, a conveyor kind of projection oh, yeah. uh, that actually slings the stone so that it can get to the far reaches without uh, disrupting a lot of the project. And that concrete is then placed on top, which has since been uh, uh, performed. So some good progress there on the stadium uh, outbuilding there. The visitor bleachers, uh, those foundations are underway. We continue to um, meet with the city on a regular basis. We have a meeting tomorrow, actually, tomorrow morning to discuss permitting and inspections amongst a few other things. And then uh, later this month and early in February, you'll begin to see that one room schoolhouse uh, relocated to its new permanent location. Um, the center photo uh, that I had to speak of here, you can kind of see more grading taking place uh, and then the photo on the right hand side is actually the stone underlayment for the track. You can see that it's actually beginning to make a curve. And this is the construction of the new track around the football field that is underway. A couple things coming up on the horizon. We've got uh, Rusilli, who is actively evaluating schedules, and then they took bids on concrete foundations for the high school. So we'll be having a, a more robust schedule update from Rusilli. Then we'll also be evaluating some bid results and some uh, GMPs. Uh, one will be probably within the next four to six weeks, I would anticipate. And then we'll likely have the final one, which won't be until the spring, but uh, we'll have some more contractual obligations to uh, finalize here over the next few weeks with respect to the high school and the building property. Any questions? Just one, where's the schoolhouse moving to? What? This, the schoolhouse is moving right, you can see on the diagram right here, the northeast corner of the property, okay. um, just to the just to the east of that parking lot that is north of the stadium. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, middle school update. Uh, Middle schools are on track, like I've been reporting out the last few months, a lot of paperwork and a lot of gearing up and planning is being put in place with respect to mobilization. Uh, we are planning on mobilizing this project in March, so that's right around the corner. Uh, and the completion date and the construction budget uh, are unchanged from the last time that we had met. Out at the elementary schools, um, here we saw some uh, significant developments over the last last uh, month or so. Um, with respect to Blacklist Elementary, we got had the gym actually turn over. 
uh, over Christmas break. And you can see in the bottom left-hand picture, there's a gym class taking place um, there in the gym, which is always a, a, a welcome site for these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. You can also see the playground in the upper left-hand corner elements, those elements being put in place, which is again, a welcome site. And on a day like today, the perfect day for them oh, yeah. to get outside and not be confined to indoor recess in a January like they normally are. Um, with respect to uh, the budget at Black Lake, slight increase in budgets, but this is more or less a, a, an accounting transfer. With respect to playground equipment, we had always had that as an owner ledger item, and, and we decided to go ahead and have Rusilli go ahead and procure those elements and get them installed. So it's more or less an accounting transfer from owner ledger to uh, construction manager ledger. Um, High Point Elementary, uh, the gym I uh, turned over last Friday, actually, here you can see the picture on the bottom right-hand side of its gym class, uh, I'm sorry, of its gym, and uh, it looks fantastic. Um, the city inspected it Friday afternoon, and, and we were able to actually uh, turn that over to the district uh, later that day, which was, which was wonderful. Um, over the winter break, the academic portion of the building was completed. Uh, and I believe that the kindergarten class is moving in this week and first grade is moving in next week. Uh, so you're going to begin to see some activation out at high points, both on the academic edition and at the gym. Uh, and similarly, a slight budget increase uh, for, for the same reason, just playground equipment tra uh, cost transfer. Out at Black Lake Athletics, uh, here we have a, uh, the same completion date and the same construction costs. The softball outbuilding, which is the center, center picture there, it is getting vertical. As you can see, the masonry is, is pretty well wrapped up, um, which, is, which is nice given the weather uh, that we're seeing some progress there. That is a, a weather-based activity, weather-sensitive activity. Um, so it is good to see that we have the base course of asphalt at the drive installed, which you can see at the uh, on the right hand side there. And then we have sod placed about 60% of the sod on the west practice field is placed 100% of the softball sod is, is, is down. And we're just waiting for decent weather to break to lay the, uh, the balance of the sod there. Um, and hopefully today pays off and we can get some of that underway. Okay, so that is our phase two update for January 23rd. I have a question that occurred to me as you were presenting. At the elementary schools, will there be a, a little lag now until we start doing some of the other work in the... Yes, yeah, yeah. So there's going to be some site rehabilitation uh, that is going to be weather dependent. So while the building is it, you have substantial completion on the building and, and buildings are occupied. There's still some punch outs. There might be some old work items to be completed. Um, so that's the work that you can anticipate over the next few weeks, maybe month, out at the elementary schools inside the building. And then once the weather breaks and we can restore the sites, uh, then that will take place. Do we have an estimated time of completion for that? I don't have that on the, at my fingertips right yeah, now, but um, I'll have it next time. time. Yeah. I'll have it next time for sure. Okay, so just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're not done, done, done. Uh, there's still some work in the spring has to take right. place on the site. Okay. Good feedback that the gym was completed. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah. Family is still there. Oh, that's great. That's good to hear. We appreciate it. But that's good to hear. And we're worried. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know until you know, right? I totally get it. Um, and I will just share, I don't know if this is your, your time or not, but I got a call actually from a resident of Gahanna today who thanked us for the um, flyer that was sent to all of the people. Um, they said it was um, a lot of information, things that they had been wondering about, and it had, had enough detail. To, I forget how... She described she and her husband, um, but you know that that one the detail, not just oh, big picture. So, yes. 
Well yeah. done on that. Stuff. Yeah, I had a Thank similar. You. It was the comparison on the back that was the reoccurring theme that people really they wanted liked. to see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, good. good job. I will add that our next master facilities committee meeting is February 14th, and we will be at High Point to view the new phases. Well, that makes sense. Right, that's good. right before this meeting, the mm -hmm. financial facilities. Should be great. Good. Maybe we should have finance and facilities there. <laughs> well, thank you, Mark. Any thank other you. questions for Mark? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, well, and, and you may want to say for this, I guess you're getting ready to, to discuss the phase two construction um, financials. <laughs> and as I looked at that, I hope you'll, you'll cover. Um, how we're gonna kind of chop away at this target spending. So, <clears throat> you want to yeah. Because we, we actually, oh. we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> just as uh, well, we had, um, what day that was last week. Um, so yeah, this is the now the third month that we've done the phase two construction uh, fund report. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, attached to it i love it um <laughs> so this is the first time and it's it's unique um so what we have here is this beginning from the beginning of the transaction when we sold the bonds the revenue that has come in and as we do this on a fiscal year basis going forward so it's that life to date report as you'll see um the column in the middle that's highlighted in the gray is, is capturing the current fiscal year so those numbers will continue to change through june 30th of 23 21, 22, those are actuals. Those are, that's, that's baked in the cake. That's, the, those aren't going to change. Um, but then each month as revenue comes in, what for us, it's inter, interest earnings um, or losses. And it's on the expenditure side, tracking where those expenses are going by, by project location. Um, so what we have um, that, that Mrs. Morning was referring to is the year two IRS um, spending target of 30% that we're looking at. This is a, number that that mark that my team that mark's team that legal team it was all watching very very closely um year one we did not make that um a lot of things happened that we did not anticipate that the district did not anticipate COVID and the impact of that on the project um the the, the legal team is extremely prepared um, <laughs> lots of documentation about what those delays were and why um, in the event there would be any question by the irs and as as confident as they are in in the defense of that i told them by no means do we want to be the guinea pig for the irs yeah. they are they're ready for that um because it's, it's it's all there and we're not alone every other district that's gone through construction projects and not just school districts municipalities everybody that's been doing this has been facing the same issues mm -hmm. so we're we know we missed year one, year two, and that mark is at the end of March because it goes from when those bonds were issued. So we go back to March of 23, and that's what that that's what that that mark is. Um, right now, we are projecting to be very very close. We're closing that gap. Um, we're 20. We're projecting to be at 28 percent. So we've got to pick up two percent um, in the next couple in this month, February and March to hit that. So that is on our radar. Um, I would I would say I'm looking at Marcus. He was on the same call with with, with me and the attorneys. Um, there wasn't anything that caused them major alarm right now. February might be a little different message. So we are doing everything we can to make sure that the work is getting done as quickly as possible. That invoices are getting turned in as quickly as possible, so that we get them paid as quickly as possible to hit that mark. So that's that's a little bit of where we are right now to catch up with that projection. This is. You're looking at the the spend to date, so that mark that we're looking is it, is that what you're pointing at? Well, I'm, I'm the question I have. So you have the total expenditures, but the encumbrances, which are 25 million, as right? we spend, that's going to that's going to close up. Right? Well, so that was my question: Is that what is come in to be paid that's not included yet? No, it's just it's just orders that have been placed, so we don't know when. We okay. don't know when what work has been done until the invoice comes in. Right. So we're looking at that the, that twenty eight percent that I was looking at is what our projection is. So we are going out and projecting what we're going to spend, even though this reports through December. 
we right. are projecting what should well, come you're in. Because you're close again. if you use all the 25 and a half million and you're 29 point whatever percent and we still have three months. But that's what my question was going to be is how much of that 25 and a half million are we thinking is not going to be paid before the end of We would have to go back and look at that because we are projecting what's going to be paid in January, in February, and March. So each month as we go through with our reconciliations with Mark's team, we're truing that up because we're sending our transactions to match up against what their projections right. were to see how close we can get so we can get to that 30 per, that 30%. Just a, a clarifying question. Is the 25 million encumbrances, is that included in these expenses? So no, it's no, already no. expense the bottom part, the expense okay, is paid. So that's right. Yes. So yes, if we spend that, we're going to be okay. We just have to make sure that A, the work gets done. Right. Because some of these things that we may have, we have may have you know purchase orders out there, but there may be items that we're not anticipating to get till April. <clears> April. <throat> if that's the case, right. that encumbrance won't go down because we don't have those goods and materials right. or services provided yet. Are, are there items beyond the encumbrances that are possible? Or is, do, do the encumbrances yes. include everything? I mean, I, I guess I don't know what you've included in encumbrances. Right. Is that only the things that you have some degree of? It's only the things that they have, that the business office has submitted purchase orders. Okay, so, so there, there is could, a possibility. There, could, yes. this, there should be more, right? I mean, technically, by the time we would get to March, you would have more things being, I mean, every month things should be getting ordered, right? right. It's just right. a matter of the timing of it being ordered and when they're projected to come in. And that's what we don't have right. the yeah, visibility I looked, to. I looked at like High Point, we've spent 78.6% of our budget and we just took possession basically of the interior spaces. So I would expect to see High Point and Black Lake Elementary, yeah. which is at 89.5. So there, that may, we may not have a lot of room there, but right. Um, right. high school. But and, East and, is going to get going also. Like, and the track, right? Yeah. Going in February. Yeah. And... yeah, it's it's going to be a play of the play. Which uh, and, and we've been tracking it and monitoring, and this is why we've been having a monthly phone call with Bricker and, and, and their team, um, because there's just there's just been so many uh, um, uh, delays with respect to supply chain, where and all of these timelines, yeah. these bond timelines, were established years and years numbers. ago. <laughs> with a different supply chain yeah. uh, and, and lead times and things like that. And, and to Scott's point, districts and municipalities are all facing the same thing. So sure. it, it's great to get a vote of confidence from, from Bricker that we, we even if we don't make this, we should be okay. However, um, uh, there's, by all means, we're gonna make every effort we can to get that spend where it should be. And response in, in the reorder oh, that yeah. we did by moving the high school up a little bit and getting the project moved yeah, quicker yeah, than yeah. we had originally anticipated. That might hope close the gap a little bit as well. Right. Because that's I mean that is the biggest bulk of what right. that's Absolutely. meant. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Can I call the question? I know those were the highlights. I mean that that's that's what it's all about hitting that milestone and there's another one at, uh, that we'll have to hit but it's later on down the road and there's a very high degree of confidence that we'll have that threshold to go ahead is that the share 50 percent that's yeah. you're one, two, three, uh, there's and one two there's a six month threshold which we did hit we, we didn't hit the one and now we're at the uh this year mark and then the next one will be it's either three years or three, maybe a little bit three, three, three years yeah, yeah. And with the high school going full bore right. and the middle school pretty much being wrapped up, we should definitely hit that mark. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, you actually can leave. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just been wanting to get to the chocolate. <laughs> you're going to stop so right here. I got some of you. Anything else you wanted to add on the construction report? Yeah. Thank you. All right, moving right into the monthly financial report. Okay. Um, 
but I, I will say this is our first committee meeting using more docs so I love the fact that we're doing this and, and getting some feedback from you know from some of you we're very this allow us to be even more nimble and responsive to the questions um, and concerns that may have been may have, may or may not have been raised um, in the current or in the future as well um, with the monthly financial report we've We've got the highlights here um, that we share regarding the general fund, the permanent improvement fund, and the building project fund. Um, on the general fund, we received just under $1.6 million in the month of December. Uh, state funding was just, just over $1.1 million, interest earnings just over $22,000, and our Medicaid reimbursement that we worked with um, our special ed department to seek reimbursement from the state for eligible expenses was $349,000, which was it's a great number. Um, this is for the services that we're providing for those students that we are able to do that. On the expenditure side, we spent just over 8.1 million. Um, we are smack dab in the middle, halfway through the fiscal year. Um, total expenses for 23 on the general fund were at 48.38% of budget, so just a little bit under, but we're, we're right on track. Any cash balance for December? Of 22 was $37,110,173.34. Permanent improvement fund, uh, it was $203.16, um, still much higher than it, it was in 2021 with those wonderful interest rates. Uh, we did have a ex major expense in the PI fund. The total expense was just over $2.8 million. $2.77 million of that was the, the debt payment for principal interest for the certificates of participation, which were the, uh, the 2021 um, issuance. And the ending cash balance for the PI fund is $4,343,746.36. Um, unfortunately, on the, the building fund, it's just timing of when some of these investments were locked in and where they came in at the maturity with the changing interest rates over there. Um, we did realize a loss in December. That's the first time that that happened. Um, but obviously, as these investments matured, we are able to reinvest those funds at a much higher interest rate than when they were invested at originally. So we did have some losses there of 63000 The expense side, uh, total for the month was just over 540,000. And again, these numbers will align up with what you what you saw in the previous report that we talked about as well. Uh, the ending cash balance, um, the building fund is $217,497,106.07. The other thing that we, and uh, hopefully this will help, especially with the committee members, because with this being on, on board docs and your screens, you'll, you can make that, just looking up there, I can't even, I, I can tell what the color is on the screen, um, but if I'm not looking at it on my on my laptop, I'm not gonna be able to see it. Um, can you make it bigger or not? Yeah. I have some boxes over here. Um, yeah. And, and the good thing is that folks are at this home. This is accessible to any. Absolutely, these reports are yeah. now all um, accessible. And one of the things that that I that I that was very important to me, having just coming up on a year, um, all of our fine, all of the financial reports that we've created since I've been here are those those meetings have all been loaded. And they're all accessible since March of twenty two. Um, well, with this report, there was some great dialogue and, and feedback we had at the last committee meeting. One of the questions, and I can't remember which board member asked about it, but it was the fiscal year, the fiscal five-year forecast information. So you'll see that column in yellow. That is the five-year forecast number that was in that was approved by the board in November. So the monthly estimates, so that's the, the timing piece. Um, I don't know what I don't like here is when I move over here, I lose the, the titles, but I can I can tell you what those were. So you can see the five-year forecast. That is the annual estimate that we have that we're going to at the top receive, and then it, obviously the expenses that we'll we'll spend through that that time same time frame. The fiscal year-to-date estimate compared to the fiscal year-to-date actuals, and what those differences are in terms of a dollar amount and um, a percentage variance as well. Um, one of the pieces that that continue. Um, 
be something we're digging deeper into. It's the all other revenue, and you'll see the footnote there off the side. That is uh, footnote one. This is where all of our border revision um, settlements come in. It, it, it's a timing issue, and this is something that, that Mrs. Mooring, we've that you have raised this before. This is something we need to get more data on to make sure that this is, is that we are estimating as close to what we think it will be. This is probably this is the most difficult one uh, because we know on the, the taxes and the state foundation, those are based on valuations and, and tax rates. So we know what, what those are. We know when the settlements are coming in. We know what we've requested advances. The state foundation piece, we know what that is because it's currently it's it's in the state budget. So we're monitoring that because we receive we receive payments twice a month. This one is the is the wild card, if you will. And you'll see that, that we are trending above, um, but when you look at the bottom of that, um, we do list, we try to make this a little bit easier so that we could fit onto one page. Uh, TIF revenue, we've received $5.8 million so far, and border revision board tax appeal settlements, uh, just over 103,000. So we've received through December almost 56% of, of the estimate. So that's greater than halfway through the fiscal year. So we're going to, we're continuing to monitor that. And we're looking to get data, um, access to data that's going to allow us to make that projection even tighter going forward. So it's more aligned with what, what we think it should be because we don't want it to be a large variance. I mean, conservative forecasting is, you know, we want revenue to come in greater than we expect and to spend less than we do, but we want those variances to be tight. We don't want the variances to be large. We need to be really, really close. Yeah. How, yes, how much do you think is because businesses in the state, everybody was behind because of COVID? Like we, we really don't know kind of like what a true like calendar of activity is because everybody's been behind, right? I said no. Yeah, and, and or some not. of these because these wouldn't necessarily as much be on the the, uh, the tip revenue or the or the, the border revision settlements. You would see that more reflected in the general real property. Yeah. So we actually we do get that information okay. from the county auditor, and we look at that twice a year to see where those delinquencies are and what those amounts are. So that those are the ones that we're looking at to see if somebody's if folks haven't been paying. Okay. Their taxes all the time. So we're actually, how about like we're, the board of revision? We're pretty though, close as far as like hearings and going through like all of the complaints. We do monitor our... those. We okay. this this year, um, this fiscal year is different mm -hmm. because with House Bill one twenty six, it, it changed all the rules. Okay. So those are the ones that are really going to be impacted going forward um, on tax year twenty two. So we try to get everything in as much as we could. Um, if everyone remembers, we changed when we changed in put in place the, the policy on this um, in February. We'll, we'll bring forward the list of those that right. we're going to do. So that that that's new. Right. So we're going to have to see what that looks like to see how that could compare with what we're estimating on those settlements as well. Okay. So we won't know until we get to that. Um, the other piece you'll see here in the footnotes, we've made the change um, with those. Personnel expenses for the ESSER grant um, that were attributed to the FY22 grant, but they were charged to the general fund. We made that accounting that accounting adjustment in July. Um, it was for personnel for the salaries, it's 541000 and the corresponding branch benefits were 174000 So we we removed that from what those estimates were because it lowered the projection. So by doing that, now we are looking at variances on um, salaries of 0.19% um, under and 0.02% over on fringe benefits were, were spot on. Um, so we're relieved. Look, taking this all into account, our revenue is 4.38% above estimate at this point, and our expenses are 0.89% under estimate. So we are, we are, when I say dead on anything less than 1%, you know, we're we're all we're all over this, uh, but we want to continue to look into more on that that all other revenue to make sure that that number is is, is accurate and if it's a, a timing issue or um, that the estimates off. And so as you look at this, you can just you know, be able to compare what we have, what we've estimated through the fiscal year, what we've received or expended, and you can see how that compares against that five year forecast column that's highlighted in, in yellow. Hopefully that having that data point in there is helpful for you. Look at this. 
Any questions, comments? My favorite number is the 2.6 million in the bottom right. That's our um, benefit, cash benefit of being over in revenue and under in expenses for our cash balance. So like you have a favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I circled it and gave it a classy one. All right. Any other questions? All right. The next piece on the agenda is a discussion and a review of our district debt. Um, this is the first time we've put this together. Um, we did add our amortization schedule um, to the monthly financial report, but we've, we've expanded upon that. Um, what you'll see here is on, on page two, as we've called it a, a debt report. Um, it just looks at what our long-term obligations are from a voted and an unvoted standpoint. Um, one of the things you'll see, the you'll see the same, there's a, a page in here that is the same on the monthly financial report as well as here. Um, there's some great feedback and conversation with, with Daphne and Sue looking at that, that debt piece. And I'm actually going to go to that page real quick and then I'll come back. Um, sorry for scrolling so fast there for everyone at home watching. Um, we added a lot of information to this debt schedule. This is a, a snapshot for FY23. Um, what we did is we went through and wanted to, to break this out versus which items were voted debt issues, which items were unvoted debt issues. We listed in the origination date. So that's when those bonds were or, or certificates of participation were sold in the open market. The original amount that I, I put in parentheses here, that is the principal only that was that was sold. Obviously, we have to pay interest on that when we, we, we pay that back. The payment dates are the payment dates and then the um, for the for FY23. So we made payments every June 1st and December 1st on all of our debt, with the exception of the stadium bleacher notes. Those are payments that are, we make monthly. Um, you'll see the final payment that is when that those those bonds or notes are that's the last payment that we will make. And when we hit that, yes, there are some that go out to 2059. It's a long way away. Um, those are the ones we just passed. The right? ones we just passed, mm -hmm. right. Um, I will not be here making the payment on those, but somebody else will at that point, but we've got everything lined up for them. Um, but then you'll see what the principal payment is for the principal, the coupon interest, the interest rates. So the principal and interest payments are the, the amounts that are paid on those dates during fiscal year 23. So 12 one 22, 6 one 23, that's what those payments are. The total debt service is for each of those payments. That's the principal and interest combined. And then the remaining balance is at the end of June 30th, 2023, at the end of fiscal year 23, here's how much principal and interest is remaining to be paid through that final payment date that you'll see before. So we just want one place that you can see what it all looks like. I, I like this this page for me. It's great. This is the yeah. best one. Um, I would almost prefer to have that versus all the pages other. of all right? these other well, right? yes. This is a, it's it's a very, very good, good one pager. You, have, you, you also have. have, and I won't put it up here on the screen, but behind it's all the yeah. amortization yeah. schedule for all those debt issues. In the beginning, it was part of the report that we did in 23, and it just had some more narrative around the issuance of the debt, the dates, the things that were going on at the time. So if somebody wants to look at the graph, they can read that. If they want the narrative, sure. there's more detail, but it just... It's not that we can really do anything with this, but it's just it's just to illustrate and report out to show where we are with right. our with the issuance of our debt, because we had to do things differently in 21, because from a from a voted standpoint, you can only do 9% of the district's total valuation or the debt limit. So we were up against our debt limit. So we had to do certificates of participation in an unvoted standpoint to make sure that we could we didn't exceed that threshold. Mm -hmm. um, you can go up, you can go an additional 4%, but there's some additional things you have to go through with the High Department of Education, the Department of Taxation to request that. But that's why there was a combination of 21 issue that was bonds and certificates of participation to keep within those debt limitations. Well, we just wanted to put this information out here um, just for folks to be able to understand where we are from a debt perspective. So I find it, comforting to know that not this fiscal year, but the next three fiscal years, we retire a debt obligation each of those years. Yes. Right, we have one in 23, 12, one 23, 12, one 24, 
and then almost right away uh, to 1625. And it's a total of almost 2 million, 3 million, right, in debt service. And the interesting piece um, on the 2020, the, the December 21st, 24 issue, well, these are all with, these are all contained within in, in the debt service. But this, the 24 issue, that was a, as you'll see, it's, it says PI levy tax anticipation note. What the district did is because that was, that was voted in, the district could re request do an unvoted issue on 50% of the anticipated revenue that would come in over a 10 year period. So if you have projects that you need to do, we're going to think of like a, a home equity loan. Right. Trying to keep up as, you, you can get that money up right. front. You can invest and do the projects because if you're, say you're fixing a roof, it's going to take, it's going to cost more if you're doing it bit by bit by bit over 10 years as opposed to doing it up front. And that's what we did. We, we did a tax anticipation note. We got 50% of the revenue over the first 10 years up front. Now that we're paying that off, when we that's paid off, the money that would have been used, for example, you know, we're looking at $830,000 you know, that we're paying out in that repayment or that loan payment, if you will, that money is going to stay in the PI fund that's going to be available for projects that we need to do right. for district, you know, for facility improvements. It's been worked in. It's been worked in. I would have so guessed that. They, they mean, <laughs> it's been spoken for, but it's there. Um, so once we pay that off, that's a great thing. That's a good thing. We don't lose that. We don't lose that money. Right. Because on the on the other ones, the that service side, obviously we issue debt as we go along to make sure that we're bringing in enough to make those principal and interest payments on a yearly basis. So this is where this is where House Bill 920 doesn't work on the debt service side because the county auditor is going to adjust that millage to make your debt payments. So if valuation tanks, which in the past, as years ago, if it tanks, they could raise that millage because it's going to bring in the same dollar amount. So that's where the 920 piece is a little bit different for a debt issuance versus a general operating yeah. issuance. Yeah. But we still just get the same amount of money. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Any questions? This is our first attempt at putting this one out oh, there. If there's, if there's any, if there's any, I was going to say, if there's anything. How often do you want to see this? I mean, you know, so right? do you think you would do it monthly and in place of sending us all those eight pages of amortization? Well, honestly, what, honestly, what I'm nothing changes really on, on a monthly basis right. it, really it, only changes, it only changes twice a year when we make those debt payments yeah um so i, I mean honestly this this page yeah just i like the whole it. thing we put together for a one-time report but i would make this page that that piece of a monthly financial report yeah that's yeah. just do it that yeah. way because okay. the immunization okay. schedules they all feed into this yeah right that's great I, I would much prefer to okay. see this than all of those pages and have to yeah because they aren't numbered number one right <laughs> but this is a great this is a great one pager with all of the information yes. and you know the dates to Daphne's point on what rolls off each month. The only question I had, and I'm sure you guys talked about all of this, not you, Scott, because you weren't you weren't here either. But on the stadium notes and the bleachers, when we looked at the information for the building, I mean, could we have combined that in to pay those off? Because I mean, at this point. I mean, it's 0.25% interest. Right. I know. I know. And I figured so that was going to be the answer. Big pay, pay, the interest rate. Right. We would have increased our interest rate. Right. So, uh, you, yeah. So that was the discussion we had. But what it, I mean, two years ago. To, to know that again now, right. because the stadium's down, right? right. We're, re, we're moving everything. Right. And you look at the debt schedule and you say, we're still paying on the bleachers. I think it's just a good time to talk about like what was the rationale with it. Right. Well, just you would have to ask somebody who wasn't in this room. Yeah, probably true. I, I, I was just curious. I knew there had to be probably a reason for that, but well, I mean, I think she's proposing that when we got our lump sum when we sold cops and our bond, that we would have paid this off. 
paid off oh, the stadium note. Oh. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying. I was think it, that's what say. I'm, I'm saying was it considered because you, we knew we were going to be tearing down the stadium and moving it. Was that part of the discussion oh. when we were looking at all of this? Because this goes all the way out to 2029. So, I mean, the new building and the new track and everything is already going to be out there. I, I, it just begs the question. So I just thought question. we could get get the information out there before somebody else but has the I, question. I think we as a board could, could maybe say that once we've dropped one of these uh, debt payments of 855000 maybe we talk about paying that off, right? Mm -hmm. And eliminating it. But but the discussion about in 2020 right one was why would we go from a quarter percent interest to 4.12 or whatever our debt is what, right and i think that's and i think that's fine if yeah. i think just stating that right. now yes. again yeah. is yeah. is the information absolutely. that we should because yes. absolutely that was, so that was, that, was the, that was the thinking yeah. okay which why right why multiply exactly. our interest expense. Right. Mm -hmm. and there, there are two columns on here. Probably don't mean eight. Sorry. I just want to clarify when I said somebody who's not in this room, I'm, I thought you were asking about the decision to begin with with the bleachers. And oh, what no. I meant, somebody not in this room, I just want to be clear, I was speaking about a different board. Right. I wasn't speaking about anything oh, other no, than no, that. No, that was no. before any of us were right. on the board. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, just wanted to clarify. And the, the last two columns you'll see, it's just, it identifies the fund special cost center. Just that way, if somebody wanted to look at this and, and tie this back to a monthly financial activity, it right. just gives that, that um, the cross-reference there, so they'll know where to, to find that and how we're tracking this. Thank you for this report. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Uh, okay, I think we're at the end of our agenda. Yep. And... No one has any questions about agenda items. We will adjourn at 7.13. That is a record finance meeting. We'd have to have a motion to do that. Dion, you wanted to do that, didn't you? Make a motion. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. new, new way to do it in 2023. Well, and, and the beauty is if anybody is watching this at home, having trouble sleep. <laughs> As these actions go, they will they will see immediately the motion be. second and the votes. It's it's instantaneous, uh, so they have much quicker access to the information than they ever did. Mister Mister Manley, which one? You got a vote, Manley? They passed it in to what they're going to do. I mean, yeah, he so needs. Yeah, you need to vote to adjourn. And vote yesterday now. Oh yes. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Torn. <laughs> yes. Mrs. Coates? Yes. Mrs. Morning? Yes. Mrs. Pickle and Yes. Thank you. Should have said.